we are trying to go uh, live on YouTube. Uh, hello, Dr. Aarti. We'll just make you the co-host. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. So I just wanted to check if I can share my screen. Is it possible to do that now? Yes. Give us two minutes. We are just uh, doing that YouTube live thing. Sure. There seemed to be a, some echo. Oh, is it? Uh, is it better now? I think so, yes. Uh, yeah, now we can do your technical check. You can try sharing your screen. Okay, let's uh, we'll make try. it post. Is it visible? Is my screen visible to you? Uh, yes. Uh, if you can go full screen. Sure. Is that okay? Yes. Um, All right. So we'll wait for another two to three minutes because we have 100 plus registrations. Sure, sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, and then we'll get started. So sure. we have a small overview of Venture Center at the beginning. Okay. Uh, so, good morning all. Uh, we'll first begin with an overview of Venture Center, uh, which will be given by Dr. Smita Kare. She is Manager of Bioincubation here at Venture Center. Over to you, Dr. Smita. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just give me a few minutes and I'll share my screen. Hope you all can uh, see my screen. Sure. Uh, so let me give you a brief overview of Venture Center. We are India's leading inventive enterprises incubator. We are now 16 years old. 
we are registered as a not for profit uh, we are the first incubator under csir our host institute is csir ncl we are supported by both department of science and technology and department of biotechnology bhairat these are few recognitions which we have won on national and international platforms for our work in this area so this is a national award which you see and this is an international one and last year we were ranked the number one bio incubator by biospectrum india and the recent one is the best incubator for nurturing ip award which we won in 2020 Venture Center. The mission is to nucleate and nurture. So we help young innovators in co-founding their startup. As well as by nurture, we mean we help startups, uh, you know, in their technology development journey. If they need help with connect for the fundraising, then we help all the inventive enterprises, technology and knowledge based enterprises, and we leverage a lot of help. from uh, our mentors uh, around so pune is the uh, oxford of the east and we have well uh, connected mentor pool from india and abroad too so we are here to support all inventive enterprises and spin offs from r and d institutions so we are sector agnostic and these are the different sectors which we are supporting these are some of the emerging sectors and pipeline now we are also supported by defense ministry uh, for idex and circular economy clean energy biopharma food security um, energy management and digital wearables is something we are looking forward to. few success stories which we are really proud to present here these are the first make in india or make in world technologies by venture center incubities so few of them here noble exchange solutions they have a 350 tons per day plant at the outskirts of pune for conversion of the solid organic waste into bio cng and here you can see the fuel stations with the bio cng produced and the buses running in pune they are converting the city waste to the city bus fuel <coughs> next here you see my lab discovery solutions which needs no introduction they are the second most diag successful diagnostic company in india uh, and uh, we all know the work they did during the covid pandemic with the uh, india's first covid 19 self test kit and also the rt pcr and antigen test kit and uh, this is tarana wireless which is a soft landing company at venture center so this is a program which we run and here you can see the different soft landing companies which have been supported so these are uh, this program is for companies who are set up uh, outside india but when they want to start some new r&d in india and they are looking for a small space that's how we support under soft landing and tarana wireless has their software development base here at venture center and in fact they are a unicorn now so few fact files we are now 16 years old supported 700 plus startups who are different programs 170 plus have been on the campus 11 spin off companies have been supported uh we have almost 50 plus team size now and uh, the resource centers which we have created the special strengths are intellectual property facilitation center the technology transfer office regulatory facilitation center advanced services which we are offering for prototyping also the analytical uh, facility so we have a highly engaged community of uh, innovators and mentors and we keep conducting events throughout the year which really provide us a good platform to uh, connect with innovators and mentors and also connect them so we are very inclusive and here you can see 30% or are women founders or enterprises where the co-founding team has women uh, founders there and uh, 85% founders with higher degrees from premium institutes from india abroad or a very rich work experience so that's the economic impact which we have created along with our startups so here we are to provide early a uh, high touch mentoring to all the early stage startups by early stage we mean a startups at idea proof of concept or prototype stage and we are supporting inventive enterprises so here you can see the unique families of patents filed by our startups so this is a complete innovation ecosystem which we have created at venture center we are providing dedicated lab spaces office spaces and along with that we have all our advanced services under one roof for young innovators and startups to start their technology development journey so we provide mentoring both online offline through our different uh, mentoring programs 
We host a lot of funding opportunities in form of fellowships, POC grants, seed funds, CSR funds. Uh, there's a very good funding database online available at a library here. And these are other facilities for prototyping. Uh, other than the dedicated lab spaces, we have shared lab spaces for basic chemistry, basic analysis, and biology, where you have basic equipment, uh, which could be you know, used when you're starting with your uh, R&D. You might not be able to buy all the equipment with the grant funding. So the basic ones can be utilized over here. Uh, a prototyping lab, which has 3D printers, laser cutters, scanners, uh, testing and analysis, we have all the equipment for spectroscopy, chromatography, thermal analysis, electrophoresis. And uh, in fact, we have three LCMS with us. And this is a Center for Biopharma Analysis, which is supported by National Biopharma Mission Virac. Uh, this is a GLP compliant laboratory for extensive characterization of biomolecules. Most of them are into healthcare and they need to understand the regulatory pathway ahead. For that, we have a regulatory information facilitation center. Uh, we have uh, IP agents in our team, patent agents, who help our startups file their IPs. Uh, this is a technology transfer office supported by NBM. So uh, here we help connect the technology seekers and technology providers. And there are a lot of technology showcases which we do through the social media as well as as events to showcase promising technologies which could be further licensed uh, to big industries to actually take them to market. Then we have further partnerships for all these activities. And these are the different natural programs which we are running with DST and DD. So just to give you one example, anyone who's working on a medtech product development, we have a whole suite of facilities available, right from POC development to making the prototype, doing the pilot manufacturing, sterilization, packaging in the ISO 13485 certified clean room adventure center. And finally, understanding the regulatory pathway and doing the regulatory submissions to CDSO or other geography regulatory uh, authorities uh, with the help of RIFCG. So these are uh, different programs at different stages which are available for entrepreneurs and young innovators. So this is a quick snapshot of incubities who are there on the campus right now. So here you can see most of them are into healthcare, but we have people in other sectors too. And these are the broad domains which are coming up at Venture Center. And here you see the logos of the startup companies who are there on the campus. And other than uh, the services which we are providing, we have some more service providers on the campus as ecosystem partners. These are some of the spin outs which we have supported uh, through Natural Labs. I'm very proud to tell you that our reach has been really wide and we have touched innovators from 22 states with the help of different programs of BIRAC, DST, uh, Atal Innovation Mission. This is the board of directors of Venture Center, which is chaired by uh, Professor Ashish Lele, the director of CSR NCL. And that's Dr. Premna. He is the founding director of Venture Center. And then we have representation from uh, industry, government, academia, and entrepreneurs also. These are our supporting partners from the government. Our supporting partners from CSR. Few glimpses of the facilities which we have and we'll be happy to host you here and show you around. Uh, so this is the 3D uh, way we have a 3D printer, laser cutter, 3D scanner. That's our uh, tinkering lab, the prototyping facility. That's ISO certified deck tech clean room. Here we have the LCMS facility. Uh, these are the shared lab spaces, cell studio, where we have a uh, confocal microscope, flow cytometer, and that's the bioincubator building. Uh, that's our campus, Venture Center campus front view. It's a very green, uh, large, conducive campus here, and different uh, event spaces, meeting spaces, and library. And that's about Venture Center. We are there on all the social media handles, and uh, please follow us on these social media handles to get all the updates about you know, the announcement of different funding calls or the, these kind of events which we run. And you can always connect to us for more information. So that's all from my side. Uh, over to you, Vikna. Thank you, Dr. Smita. Uh, just a minute. Uh, 
so now let's begin with the session that all have been waiting for. Uh, we have Dr. Arti from Bayrak giving a talk on uh, I4 and PACE, uh, demystifying the funding modalities, and the next talk will be about grant writing. Uh, to give you a brief about Dr. Arti, uh, she is currently working as a senior manager at Bayrak. She has done her master's in biotechnology from uh, JNU, Delhi, and PhD from uh, NCDC, Delhi, in the area of molecular biology. Her prime responsibility at Bayrak is grant management under SIBRI. Over to you, Dr. Arti. So thank you, uh, thank you so much, Megna, for uh, the kind introduction. So good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Venture Center for hosting this webinar and giving us the opportunity to, to uh, uh, talk to you all. So regarding this session, uh, I just wanted to inform everyone, Dr. Poonam was supposed to take one of the topics of the presentation, but due to some unavoidable circumstances, she would not be able to join us. So I would be covering both the topics, funding opportunities at BIRAC and grant writing in one combined presentation. Uh, so uh, yeah. there's a request to switch on your video and uh, if you can start sharing your screen. Yeah, so there seems to be some problem with my uh, camera. So I'll try sharing my screen. OK, no issues. Not a problem. So is my uh, slide visible? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt, just a minute. Before uh, we begin with the presentation, a quick instruction for all participants. Kindly keep your uh, mics on mute. And uh, you may post your questions in the chat box. We'll take up after the talk. Thank you. So all right. So, so today I'll be uh, giving a brief about a brief about uh, uh, you know what all schemes we have at Barak, uh, which can be. Uh, availed by the startups or companies or academia um, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, proceeding on the uh, uh, innovator's journey. So as we all know that um, Barak sector is very challenging. So if someone wants to uh, have their own enterprise, um, heavy investments are required in terms of money, risk factor is very high and the gestation period is very long and the success rate is relatively low as compared to the other sectors, but it's a very highly rewarding area. So, um, you know, keeping all these factors in mind, Department of Biotechnology under Ministry of Science and Technology set up BARAC, which is basically a section eight not-for-profit company. So uh, BARAC basically supports startups, entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises to develop innovative and affordable biotech products and technologies to address the unmet needs. So basically, Barak is a central agency that empowers, enables, and accelerates the biotech innovation ecosystem in India. And apart from providing uh, funding uh, through its grants, Barak also promotes entrepreneurship. We also provide a facility of incubation centers uh, through Bioness scheme to its grantees. And uh, we also provide mentorship uh, in terms of technical as well as business uh, uh, through our wide uh, network of experts. We also help in providing platform for uh, you know, recognition to our grantees at uh, national and global level. So uh, at Barak, we support projects belonging to various areas in biotech, be it healthcare, wellness, agriculture, sanitation, clean energy, waste management, industrial biotech, et cetera. So you see that um, uh, Barak covers the whole gamut of biotechnological areas. So though there's a lot more that Barak does, but it's uh, you know practically impossible to uh, cover uh, in one presentation. So I'll be focusing on the uh, support, financial support provided by Barak, uh, supporting early and late stage research uh, through its various funding schemes. But I'll definitely be touching on the other uh, enabling services as well. But mainly, my focus would be on the uh, funding schemes. So this slide is about uh, funding assistance from Barak. So um, if you ask, uh, whom do we support? 
So you will see that the Barak supports everyone from uh, individual to startups, to SMEs, biotech companies, research institutions and universities, NGOs, societies, and so on. So Barak supports practically everyone from individual to company to academia. And what do we support? No matter you know, what stage of uh, product or process development you are at, you might be at the ideation stage or the uh, proof of concept stage, or you uh, are carrying out the early or late stage validation or at the pre-commercialization or commercialization stage. Barak has schemes uh, which caters to different stage of development of uh, products and processes. So this slide gives you a snapshot of pipeline of various schemes at Barak to take your product from lab to market. So there's um, um, a BIG and SIP scheme uh, for ideation stage of project. Sibri and Leap covers the early stage validation and CRS and BIPP covers the um, uh, Sibri basically covers the early stage of validation and BIPP covers the late stage of validation. And once you are uh, through with the validation part uh, and you are ready to take your uh, product to um, uh, market, we have PCP or product comm commercialization unit scheme to help you with that also. So I'll be giving you the details of all these schemes as we go forward in the presentation. So the first scheme is uh, Biotechnology Ignition Grant Scheme, big scheme as we call it. So the objective of big, big scheme is to foster generation of ideas having commercialization potential. So, <coughs> so it is uh, important to note here that Barak only caters to the project having commercialization potential. So if your idea does not have any commercial potential at the, um, you know, when going forward, so there would hardly be any takers at Barak for your uh, idea. Uh, so BIG also provides supports up to proof of concept stage. It encourages researchers to take technology closer to market through uh, a startup and hence stimulate enterprise formation. So two calls are uh, announced in a year uh, under BIG in January and July. And each grantee receives up to 50 lakh for research project. Um, and the uh, research duration of the project uh, cannot exceed 18 months. So the scheme is currently managed through eight big partners who worked with the grantees uh, to provide mentoring, monitoring, and networking. And uh, so one thing that is to be noted here is uh, that in this scheme, the funds are not given to the grantees directly, but are routed through big partners. So with respect to eligibility of the applicants in uh, BIG scheme, both individual and uh, companies are eligible. With respect to individual, any individual uh, having graduate degree in any discipline is eligible to apply under BIG. The only condition is that uh, the applicant must be incubated in a recognized incubator. With respect to company or LLP, so any startup company or LLP registered under um, Company registered under Indian Companies Act 2013 can apply. And uh, the incorporation date should not be earlier than five years from the date of closing a particular big call. The, the applicant company should have its own uh, in-house R&D facility that is functional and adequate to execute the project. But if the company does not have a functional uh, uh, a laboratory of its own, then it is expected that uh, uh, that you get incubated in an incubator where uh, you can avail the facilities required to carry out the proposed work. So in this slide, I'll be introducing you to the term TRLs or technology readiness levels as we call it. So these are uh, basically uh, TRL one to nine. So uh, keeping NASA TRLs as a reference, so Barak has also come up with detailed definition of levels in the TRL scale for various thematic areas. And uh, so these TRL definitions guide the innovators, evaluators, and investors in identifying the stage of technology under development that they are currently at. So, um, so if I have to explain uh, this, so for example, when you are at the ideation stage, so this is, this is when you have an idea, uh, but you're still pondering if this idea would work or not. This is TRL one. So TRL2 is, you know, when you have carried out some basic research work to show that your idea works. And TRL3 is when you have generated the proof of concept for your idea. 
similarly, TRL5 and 6 are sort of uh, early stage validation. TRL7 is uh, demonstration of technology on a limited number of samples. TRL8 is, is pre commercialization stage. And TRL9 is when your product is ready to hit the market. So these are the like uh, broad uh, definitions for various TRLs, but uh, it can differ from uh, various thematic areas. So uh, you can uh, uh, you know uh, find more details about the TRLs in various thematic area at the Barak website. So this slide shows the I4 scheme, uh, which is uh, intensifying the impact of industrial innovation. So uh, this scheme is uh, operated through prog two programs, SIBRI uh, and BIPP. So, you know, many of you uh, must be aware that SIBRI and BIPP uh, schemes uh, have been in existence at Barak, but now these have been brought under the umbrella of I-4. So for I-4, three calls are announced uh, um, uh, in a year, in Feb, June, and uh, October. And um, so in Barak, there are two types of schemes. One where uh, industry is the primary applicant and the another where academia is the primary applicant. So in I-4, primary applicant is industry, but academia can be brought in as the collaborator. So as I just mentioned, I-4 is operated through SIBRI and uh, BIP. So SIBRI is basically small business innovation research initiative. And the scope of the SIBRI is to support uh, development and initial validation of new products and technologies. Here, the endpoint of the proposed study should be TRL-6 or below. Whereas in, uh, in BIPP, which is Biotechnology Industry Partnership Program, the scope includes supporting validation, demonstration, and pre-commercialization of the products and technologies. And the endpoint of the, the proposed work here should be TRL-7 or above. In terms of funding, uh, in SIBRI, 100% percent, hundred grant from BIRAC is provided for projects up to rupees 50 lakh as the total budget. But for projects more than uh, uh, rupees 50 lakh budget, BIRAC grant would be rupees 50 lakhs plus 50% 50 of the cost exceeding rupees 50 lakhs. So if I have to explain this with an example, so uh, for example, if your project has a budget of 100 lakhs, the uh, 75 lakhs would be provided as granting aid uh, from BARAC to the applicant, and the rest 25 lakh has to be brought in by the company as company contribution and SIBRI. Whereas in BIPP, in terms of funding, Irrespective of the amount uh, of the total budget of a project, Barak's contribution to the total project cost will not exceed 50%. So going by the same example, uh, if, the, uh, if the cost of a project is 100 lakhs, the Barak contribution would be 50 lakh, and the rest 50 lakh has to be uh, brought in by the applicant company. So in terms of eligibility for companies, uh, uh, NI4 proposals can be submitted by solely by a company incorporated under the Companies Act 2013 or LLP incorporated under the LLP Act 2008. Uh, companies or LLP, LLPs can also apply uh, jointly with other private or public partners, uh, uh, universities and institutes. And uh, here the important thing to keep in mind is that Minimum 51% of the shares of the company should be held by Indian citizens holding Indian passport. And uh, minimum half of the persons who subscribe their name to the LLP document uh, as a part should be Indian citizens in terms of LLP. So uh, applicant, uh, the applicant company or LLP should either have their uh, in-house facility to, to carry out the proposed uh, research work and if they don't have this facility, they are expected to be incubated with a recognized incubator facility. So some more details about the SIBRI scheme. Um, this was India's first biotech funding scheme uh, launched by DBT in 2005 to promote public-private partnership. So earlier this was managed by DBT, but when BIREC came into existence, uh, uh, this scheme was transferred to BIREC. So this scheme facilitates early stage validation path. And um, uh, for this, uh, three calls for proposals are announced and uh, 
the applicants can um, uh, submit their proposals. And there is no ceiling with regard to the total uh, budget of the project under SIBRI. In terms of uh, uh, budget, uh, as I just mentioned, up to 50 lakhs, 100% uh, of the project cost is uh, 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 like Barak support the company for 100% of the project cost as granted aid. But in case of project where uh, the total budget is more than 50 lakhs, rupees 50 lakhs plus 50% of the amount exceeding this rupees 50 lakhs is supported by Barak and the rest has to be brought in by the applicant company. So another point to be to be noted is that in case of collaborative projects in Sibri, uh, where there's an academic collaborator, the contribution to academic collaborator will be over and above this amount. So this slide um, shows the impact of Sibri scheme over the years. So we have received more than 2000 proposals and uh, around uh, like 311 projects has been sanctioned. More than 390 uh, 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 grantees are getting benefit benefited by the Sibri scheme, and uh, we have we have committed more than 278 uh, crore of funding under Sibri. 45 IPs have been filed, and 36 products and technologies have been developed under the Sibri scheme. Now, coming to the BIPP scheme, which is Biotechnology Industry Partnership Program. So this scheme was launched in 2009, uh, four years after SIBRI. And this public-private partnership scheme promotes innovative research for development of transformational product and processes using the biotech approaches. So this scheme basically serves as a launch pad for late stage validation, scaling, and commercializing uh, the high-risk innovations. IP rights rest with the industry. Barak has no say with respect to IP in any of the projects. So financial support is provided to large, medium, and small-scale industries up to 50% of the project cost as granted aid. And just like SIBRI, in collaborative projects involving an academic partner, the academic institution has funded over and above the 50% grant provided to the industry. So in BIPP, uh, three calls are announced uh, uh, in Feb, June, and October, and the funding is provided under four different categories. So category one is for uh, projects with major uh, social relevance. Category two is for high risk projects. And category three is where we provide funding for uh, uh, conducting clinical trials and agricultural trials. And in category four, um, uh, creation of national major facilities is supported, which can be utilized by the innovators. And uh, the, here, the Barak grantees are given preferential uh, treatment with respect to uh, cost for utilizing the facilities. In category four, the support is provided uh, in the form of loan and not as grant and aid. So this slide shows the impact of BIPP scheme. Uh, around 3092 pro proposals have been received, 228 have been sanctioned. 293 are the total beneficiaries and 541 crores uh, amount of funds have been committed by Barak. 32 IPs have been filed and 56 products and technologies have been developed under the scheme till date. Now coming to uh, royalty part, which is uh, one of the important aspects of uh, biotech schemes. So irrespective of the schemes, be it BIG, SIBRI or BIPP, royalty at the rate of 5% of annual net sales of the products developed with Barak's assistance is payable to Barak. And the payment of royalty begins with the first sale of the product. And your liability to pay the royalty will stop after the royalty amount paid becomes equal to the amount of the grant in aid dispersed. Now coming to the uh, pay scheme, which is promoting academic research conversion to enterprise. So this scheme has two components, AIR and the uh, CRS. So under uh, AIR, uh, Academic Innovation Research, so this is basically to promote the development of proof of concept for a process or product by academia with or without the involvement of industry. Whereas in contract research scheme, validation of a process of prototype which has been developed by academia is taken up by the industrial partner for further validation in a contract research mode. So what type of uh, projects are supported under BIREC uh, under AIR scheme? 
So the projects with well-established proof of principle leading to the development of prototype of a product or technology uh, are uh, supported. And please note that uh, any uh, basic research uh, or projects without well-established proof of principle having low or uh, no commercial potential will not uh, find any takers at Bayerac. 24 months can be the maximum duration uh, uh, at which we support the project. And the total co cost of the project does not exceed rupees 50 lakhs under a year. So here the non-recurring cost uh, cannot exceed 10% of the total cost because it is expected that at the academia, uh, there, would be a, uh, there would be a lab having uh, adequate facilities to carry out the proposed work. So whatever, um, you know, uh, one or two little equipments are required for the proposed uh, work, that can be uh, procured through this 10% of the non recurring grant. IP rights uh, uh, rest with the academia alone or jointly shared between academia and industry as per the understanding between the two partners. <coughs> So who can apply under air? So under this uh, pay scheme, as I as I mentioned during the I-4 scheme that uh, in I-4, the primary applicant is uh, industry, whereas in uh, pay, the primary applicant is uh, academia. So under AIR, any academic institution, public or private institute, university, NGO, or research foundation, having well-established support system to research can be the primary applicant. It can apply either individually or jointly with another academic or industrial partner. Eligibility for the applicants would remain the same for uh, the academia. Uh, it should have proper registration and accreditation from a government body. And for a company, it should be um, uh, registered under the Indian Companies Act with at least 51% uh, shareholding. So the types of projects that are supported under CRS. So the academia must have established proof of concept uh, and the data that has been generated for uh, establishing proof of concept uh, is taken up uh, for validation by the industry partner in contact research mode. Who can apply in CRS? Uh, any academia uh, can be the applicant, primary applicant with one or more partners of which at least one is a company. So in case of CRS, having an industry collaborator is mandatory. Whereas in AIR, um, uh, we, we expect that you, you have a partner from starting of the uh, uh, project development. But uh, yes, in CRS, it is mandatory to have an industrial partner who can uh, take the lead uh, developed by the academia for the, uh, forward for the uh, validation. Funding is provided in the form of grant to both academic as well as industrial partners. And in case of IPR, the IP rights reside with the academia, but the industry partner has the first right of refusal for commercial exploitation of the new IP in case of CR scheme. So uh, to differentiate uh, the basic R&D projects from the projects suitable for uh, uh, support under BIREC, uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, technical eligibility criteria for AIR, uh, which has come into existence of late. So the applicant must have completed at least one extra mural funded project in India with minimum project duration of three years in the same research area of the project proposed. And they should have authored the one publication in index journals uh, as lead author or patents filed in the same research area of the project proposed for AIR. And uh, as a proof, the applicant must upload these published papers or uh, filing documents related to, P, uh, to, related to IP at the time of the submission of the application. And the preliminary data that has been uh, generated by the applicant, uh, it should also be submitted so while submitting the application. So um, also, in uh, case of AIR, a justification on, on how the project on completion would be CRS ready must be included. Um, and the proposals involving agricultural should have viable product or technology, which can be taken up for trials at the later stage. And uh, the AIR proposal should have an industry participation. 
and the partnering collaborating company should be more than five year uh, five year after the incorporation applicants are encouraged to have industry partners in order to demonstrate translational strategy at the later stage and the final technical objective or the milestone of the air proposal should reflect the technology that is near to the industry readiness so some technical eligibility criteria for uh, crs schemes are so evidence of proof of concept and validation ready data supporting the proposal is compulsory and must be submitted in the crs applications and the proposals which have received air funding earlier should have the same industrial partner who collaborated for air project and any deviation must be duly justified with clarity on ip governance the crs proposed proposal should be accompanied by the commitment letter by the industrial partner to exercise the first right for monetizing the product or technology so this slide uh, shows the impact of the pay schemes uh, around 2000 proposals have been received by now and 126 projects have been sanctioned uh, 206 um, uh, grantees uh, have availed the benefits and 96 crore of funds have been committed under the scheme 13 ips have been filed and seven products and technologies have been um, developed Uh, now, coming to the types of projects that are supported under BIRAC. So, um, proposals related to the process of product innovation with significant impact or commercial potential gets um, supported. Um, as I've been telling you, um, uh, repeating again and again, that having commercial potential is absolutely necessary. And developed process should be sustainable uh, and scalable. The technology readiness level at the end of the project should be TRL3 in case of AIR and TRL6 for SEBRI and TRL7 and above for BIPP and CRS scheme. What does not get supported at BIRAC? So basic um, uh, exploratory research ideas without proper proof of principle doesn't get uh, supported. Having preliminary data is uh, absolutely essential and uh, funding cannot be used to support PhD student research or any other academic research. Uh, the grant is not a research fellowship and the, you know, in case of challenge call, the proposals uh, uh, not falling under the mentioned priorities areas would not get evaluated and would be considered out of scope. So in this slide, I'll be giving a brief on the evaluation and the decision-making uh, process at BIREC. So whenever a call is announced, uh, you have to submit a proposal and the submission of the proposal is online only. BIREC does not accept uh, applications offline. So, <coughs> so the company has to register uh, on the BIREC website, select the relevant call, complete all the relevant information and finally uh, submit the proposal. So please don't wait for the last day and time for the sub, uh, submission of your project because you know many a times at, um, at the last moment some technical uh, glitch would develop uh, and the server is, server is down or very slow. So you might miss submitting your application. So, um, and also, um, So, uh, you know, there have been times when uh, applicants have missed submitting the applications online. Then they write to uh, BIRAC over email or send the project over email uh, and request uh, to accept the proposal. What we can't uh, do is do it because, uh, you know, uh, when you submit an application online, it, your proposal gets a, gets a uh, uh, reference number, which is uh, given by the computer. So please uh, submit your projects uh, well in time. So these are the broad parameters that are kept in mind by the experts for evaluation of your proposal. So this is this is important, um, uh, you know, uh, when you start writing the grant for submission. So uh, the proposal should be based on on some scientific rationale. Yeah, yeah, you know, it should it should have some scientific merit to it. And having uh, novelty is absolutely essential. It should be a, it should not be a, a you know, mere idea. Uh, and uh, 
it should not be a me too project it should have some novelty uh, attached to it and uh, your proposal should have commercial potential uh, and the approach and the methodology that is to be followed should be clearly defined in the in the proposal investigators credentials are also uh, kept in mind uh, you know by the experts when the uh, whether the pi has the necessary experience and expertise in the field in which the proposal has been submitted by him and uh, pi should be aware of the regulatory requirements in the project and uh, preliminary preliminary work done is uh, absolutely necessary there should be substantial amount of work done to support the proposed work and this should be made available uh, uh, you know to barak for for uh, uh, this is helpful when 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 the project is getting evaluated at our end past performance and track record is also kept in mind so this is basically um, if you have received a barak grant in the past so what was the outcome of that project were you able to take that that product uh, uh, to a fruitful ending regarding to time frame um, you know this is also important the timelines of the project should be such that the uh, project product should hit the market at the right time so this uh, slide shows the pre sanction uh, evaluation process that gets followed at barak so after the announcement of uh, a call of proposal uh, submission of proposal takes place uh, online and thereafter the eligibility check is conducted and once your project gets eligible it moves to the area review panel by a uh, subject experts so there are basically four uh, area review panel that we have at barak so the first one is healthcare where devices and diagnostic uh, uh, experts are uh, included the second one is related to drugs and drugs delivery biosimilar stem cells vaccine and clinical trials the third panel is uh, of agricultural area veterinary science and aquaculture and the fourth panel is environment energy and secondary agriculture so depending upon um, uh, the thematic area in which uh, you have submitted your proposal your proposal is sent to one of the uh, experts belonging to one of these four uh, uh arp panels for evaluation so um so when your proposal is uh, through the arp panel stage you enter presentation stage where the pi is invited for presentation uh, for presenting the proposal before the tech committee which we call as uh, technical evaluation committee and if the proposal gets recommended further by the tech we conduct a site visit to the project uh, implementation site and the report that gets prepared at the site visit is once again presented to the tech committee and if it gets recommended further your project moves to the next stage uh, which is uh, evaluation by the apex committee so this apex committee is chaired by a secretary dbt and uh, is empowered to take final decision regarding the financial support to a project and if your project is recommended by apex committee for financial support so grant and aid letter is signed uh, and the funds are dispersed so this is the, broadly the process that gets followed at barak for uh, uh, pre sanction evaluation of the project so these are the four area review panels that i have already explained so we'll move on to the next slide so this slide shows the response uh, responsibilities of the technical expert committee that we have at barak so the final decision of the arp evaluation the, uh, like the arp uh, panel the final decision uh, whatever decision the arp experts have taken in their panel the final decision is taken by the tech committee on that and uh, tech also review the presentations made by pi and take the decisions regarding the further evaluation of the uh, of the project um, in terms of site visit the site visit report also get presented to the same tech committee for further recommendation and if there are any sort of clarification that are needed in a project that also gets reviewed by the tech committee and um, um, you know when uh, once the project becomes ongoing so the mentoring and uh, monitoring of the ongoing project is also carried out by the tech committee so this slide provides uh, some more information on the site visit that we carry out 
So there are uh, two types of site visit that are conducted. One is technical and the other one is financial. So in terms of technical site visit, um, generally a team of three people, two experts and a barrack facilitator, visit the project implementation site and examine the facilities, manpower, you know, expert technical expertise available at the applicant's end. So in case of financial uh, site visit, this is uh, carried out uh, by the Barak Impanel CAA to check the financial health of the company. So they examine the, the, the key as aspects like liquidity, profitability, debts and assets available at the company's end. This is basically to gauge if the company, um, you know, if the company would be able to bring its contribution of funds wherever required. So moving forward, uh, this slide shows the the flow chart of the monitoring of the sanction project or the post sanction process. Um, so for every project, uh, there's a PMC committee or the uh, project monitoring committee, wherein two experts are assigned to every project. And uh, every project has three milestones where, uh, and wherever, whenever a milestone is uh, gets completed, PI is required to submit the milestone completion report. And this report gets evaluated by either presentation at the tech end or by site visit or by uh, evaluation uh, by the PMC experts online. And if the committee finds the work done as the milestone uh, satisfactory, the new in the new uh, the next installment fund uh, release is recommended for the project. So this is how uh, the fund release and the monitoring uh, takes place at Parag. So regarding the fund disbursement, the fund disbursement is milestone based and uh, releases are made in four to five installments as per the duration of the project. So for example, if the duration of the project is uh, um, more than 12 months, the funds uh, gets dispersed in five installments uh, in 30%, 20%, 20%, and then finally 10%. And if a project is uh, less than or equal to 12 months, so we have uh, four installments for fund disbursement, 30% uh, as first, first, second, and third installment, and finally 10% as the fourth installment. So a few important aspects so that should be paid heed to when you are uh, preparing for grant writing. RFP document or the uh, request for proposal document. So this is very important. Uh, please go through the RFP document before submitting your proposal. This becomes uh, necessary in case of the, uh, if the announced call is a challenged call and the areas defined in that particular call uh, are mentioned only in the RFP document. Scheme document, uh, uh, this is another important uh, document to go through because the scope of the different schemes are different. And uh, you would want to select the appropriate scheme to submit your proposal. So it is also expected that the selection of the research problem um, has been done by a thorough um, uh, survey and the market research. You should know who your uh, competitive products are and how your product has an edge over those. And uh, commercial viability is absolutely necessary. And you should also be aware of the IP uh, feasibility, whether you'll be able to have IP on the proposed project work or not. And um, it is also expected that you should know the regulatory requirements of the proposed work. And you should have a strong technical team uh, required, uh, uh, having the required uh, expertise. And the collaborators should be chosen so as to uh, bring in the complementary expertise uh, required for the project work. And if you have, if you don't have R&D facility, then you should be incubated in an incubator having the required uh, facilities. You should also know the source of funds to be contributed towards the uh, budget of the project uh, wherever applicable. And lastly, don't wait for the last date and time to submit your project. So Barak also has a SPURSH scheme, uh, which is Social Innovative Innovation Program for Products Affordable and Relevant to Social Health. So it has two components, affordable product development and uh, 
social innovation immersion program, which we call as SIP. So uh, APD is about uh, developing products and processes and technologies with well-established proof of concept. And the under SIP fellowship is provided uh, to social innovators for identifying and addressing specific needs and gaps in the social sector. So this uh, SIP program is being implemented through 14 SPURS centers to provide all the requisite support to social uh, innovators um, in various uh, thematic areas such as maternal and child health, aging and health, um, food and nutrition, agri-tech and others. So Barak also runs a product commercialization program fund or PCP fund for uh, uh, Barak supported startups and other Indian startups with validated uh, uh, products and technology, basically uh, those which, are, which have TRL seven or above. So this scheme uh, helps the companies uh, to deal with the additional financial requirements for preparing the ground for market launch. And uh, here uh, the financial assistance is provided uh, uh, based on the need in the form of uh, grant and aid and application submission is through online mode and uh, support can be provided a maximum of two. 24 months. Barak also provides uh, the facilities in the form of enabling services for promoting innovation ecosystem, um, uh, like access to research resources, IP management, regulatory support, mentoring, capacity building, et cetera. So details of this uh, uh, would be uh, given in the forthcoming slides. So Barak runs Bionis schemes, wherein bioincubators are supported. And these incubators uh, nurtures the biotech entrepreneurial ecosystem by providing startups with incubation space, high-end equipment, technical marketing, and business mentoring support. And Barak has supported uh, around uh, 60 bioincubators uh, till now. And the total funds committed under Bionis program are 353 crores. And uh, around 6 lakh of space has been created for bioincubators. And more than 830 incubators have been supported under these incubators. So Barak Path is also one of the successful uh, schemes of uh, Barak. So this is basically patenting and technology transfer for harnessing innovations. So this scheme offers a wide range of IP and technology management services, such as patent searches, patent drafting, filing, technology evaluation, marketing and facilitation technology uh, transfer. And all Barak supported innovators are eligible to apply under Barak Path Scheme. So Biotech First Hub, this is also one of the, the popular schemes of Barak. So this is basically a facilitation unit set up by Barak to address the uh, regulatory requirements uh, related queries to startups, entrepreneurs, researchers, and academicians, et cetera. So here, uh, the DBT, Barak, ICMR, and CDSEO representatives are available for taking up your uh, regulatory related queries. And the first hub uh, is organized uh, every Friday, first Friday of the month. Uh, earlier, it used to be conducted at Barak office, but now it is being conducted online these days. So um, uh, you can uh, avail the facility of uh, First Hub uh, through prior appointment. And uh, uh, you, know, you can write to uh, the relevant uh, official, which is um, Sonia Gandhi, and the details for which can be, um, can be seen at the Barak website. So this slide shows the impact that the Barak has made over the years. Uh, we have supported uh, more than 150 uh, products and technologies and 900 uh, startups entrepreneurs. So um, for the benefit of those who wish to apply for uh, Barak grant, I would like to inform that we have a regular call open currently. So basically there are two types of calls at Barak. One is regular and the other one is challenging. So in regular call, the applicants can submit proposals uh, in uh, area of their choice. But in challenge call, some specific areas are identified by Barak and the applicants can submit proposals in those areas only. 
so the current call is a regular call which is um, open till 31st of march till 5:30 pm so you have the flexibility of submitting the proposal in the area of your liking in the current call so with this we come to the end of the presentation so uh, i'm open to take the uh, queries if there are any thank you dr arti for uh, taking us through all the byra grants and the public opportunities which are available for applicants and uh, we have few questions in the chat box so sure. maybe i'll read them for you okay So the first uh, question is by Priyanka. Yeah. So Priyanka is asking uh, that uh, we have been able to achieve up to TRL six with BIT, but it requires okay. further optimization at this level and okay. up to a commercial scale validate validation. So can I still apply for CBI? so um yes you can apply for sibri because uh, you still have to do some validation as um, uh, you just uh, mentioned so because you know under bipp your your uh, the tr level should be 7 or above yes so yes you can apply under sibri yeah uh, but she has one more follow on question that uh, she is holding 99% of the shares company shares but she is currently in nri so uh, Still, she can she apply for Sibri as principal investigator? So okay, so for Sibri, uh, the applicant has to be company, should be registered in the Companies Act, and should have fifty one percent of the uh, shareholding by the uh, Indian citizen. So if you comply with these, uh, 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 you know, requirements, you can. But if you don't, then not. So in that case, will she have to kind of identify someone from India, and yes. uh, that person needs to have fifty-one percent of the uh, shareholding in the company, right? Exactly. Okay, sure. Uh, next question is by Dr. Sanchita. She is asking in the Sibri application portal, in proposal submitted by, there are two options. So first one is individual company R and D, and second is jointly with collaborators. so okay. if she is asking if my company uh, do not have r&d and they are incubated in a tbi then which option they should choose so this is uh, 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 if you don't have a collaborator you have to choose the option of individual company uh, having r&d and uh, they might no. have to attach the loi from the tbi right yes Later so on. because you know the other one is uh, the other uh, the other option is specifically for the proposal wherein they have the collaborators so in your case if you don't have a collaborator you have to go for the first option yes sure uh, next question is by shridharan he is saying uh, if we are doing clinical trials and if they are hiring cro for conducting these clinical trials uh, in that case where will the site visit happen so um you know depending on the uh, the uh, project to project basis so we might uh, the site visit can get conducted one of the clinical trial centers other than like we uh, we might come to the project implementation site or your pro your company site as well as the uh, few of the clinical trial centers Uh, next question yes, is by Prasad. Uh, he is asking how long does the process takes, right, from the application till the grant for Sibri and BIT. So usually the process uh, is of five months. So in five months, if your project has been, um, uh, you know, uh, going on to the next stage, in five months we are able to tell you whether your project has been finally uh, requested for financial support or not. the uh, next question is by dr rohit uh, he is asking uh, uh, are ngos involved in research and development activities are also applicable for bara grants sorry i did not understand can you please repeat the question so he, uh, yeah he is saying if it is an ngo non for profit 
okay uh, and if they are doing rmd then are they applicable for barac grant so so the ngos would uh, be uh, they can apply under the pay scheme so we consider them as uh, uh, you know sort of uh, academia so they cannot uh, apply under bipp or sibri but in pay scheme. okay uh, next question is by vijay kumar he is asking what is the starting trl for i4 funding schemes So I think you had a slide on that. Yes. So the starting TRL for I four is minimum three. So you should be having a proof of concept. And for Sibri, you can go up to the TRL six. Whereas in for BIPP, it, it has to be TRL seven or above as the ending TRL. Yeah. Sure. Next question is by Satya Lakshmi. is asking is it possible to apply in the means only industry can can apply for bipp and city that's what you want to ask yes yes so for i4 which includes sibri and bipp only companies and llps are eligible for applying yeah but uh, if she is an academician she can apply for air or crs right yes yes yeah uh, ishwar singh is asking uh, if we have just an idea but no prototype in hand we have done uh, with market analysis and having full dpr and market demand so under hmm. which grant uh, of byrag they should ap uh, apply so you can try applying in big that is for uh, uh, you know ideation stage uh, uh, of product development so you can apply for big yeah uh so i think prasad is asking next call in june will be open type or a challenge type or a thematic one so in big uh, it's little different so big is uh, biotechnology uh, ignition uh, grant yeah not about big i think uh, prasad is asking about sibri and bipp okay. whether the okay. next call will be a, yeah so the next next call would be a challenge call this one is an open one this one is an open one uh next question is by dr sharad he is okay. saying i am finishing with my uh, m3 with animal study for safety and toxicity of stem cell based project uh, so how to proceed for the uh, further funding so dr sharad uh, do you want to say hi? i think uh, he is finishing with his big m3 so so i'm sorry so if, a, if, if i understood it correctly so uh, did you say you are currently uh, getting big grant and you are uh, uh, like kind of uh, yeah. he's towards the end of his big so you're yes, currently a grantee of big yes, and you're carrying out in vivo experiments right yes ma'am animal toxicity and safety is going on no? almost finishing ma'am now okay so if you want to go further you can apply for sibri okay thank you so much thank you okay uh next question is by chandra reddy uh, they are asking uh, can we apply for byrag grant if we have already received grant from uh, aim niti ayog uh, from miti uh, of course so you can apply uh, to byrag uh, even if you are a grantee of uh, you know other schemes the only thing has to be kept in mind is that the proposed work Uh, should not overlap with uh, the work that you have been funded for by the other uh, funding uh, agencies and you should have the bandwidth of carrying out the uh, you know uh, the proposed work simultaneously yeah madam uh, already with the grant myself chandramouli sir so yes, with sir. the grant what we have received we have manufactured a sterilization equipment <coughs> that is uh, up for commercial sale in the next level of r and d we have been working on this uh, neonatal phototherapy system for which uh, they said like we can actually approach for uh, in the healthcare segment with uh, byrac so that's the reason uh, this is uh, almost 50 to 60% r and d uh, work is completed like we are able to achieve the phototherapy system ready now we need to just connect it with the digital iot and make uh, the total uh, system ready so your almost voice is breaking i'm not able to uh, you know get what you're trying to tell me uh, yeah no, madam now uh, 
is my voice clear uh, yeah but maybe uh, dr chandra what she wants to say is uh, the scope of the project has to be different uh, the work plan whatever you have uh, achieved with uh, the aims of funding that and if you are applying for a birac grant the work plan should be different so uh, you should be at a different prl level and uh, yes. that's what you there should not be any overla- overlapping component okay understood madam understood thank you yeah. um uh, so next question again satya lakshmi has asked that uh, Maybe Satya Lakshmi, you can unmute yourself and ask because this question was asked. So, what exactly uh, do you mean by this? Like, without any collaboration with academy or industry. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Myself, Dr. Satya. My Good question afternoon. is: uh, Without any collaboration with the academy, can we apply for the BIP or uh, SIBRI funding? Yes. Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, under BIPP and SIBRI, you can apply as individual uh, company. or you can apply uh, in collaboration with other company or academy okay ma'am thank you uh, next question is by chandru he is asking can an indian company who has licensed ip from us based organization will be eligible for sibri okay um not sure on this can i request you to send me this question uh, over email and i can get it addressed uh, by the ip cell yes sure we'll do that and we'll yeah. uh, share uh, the response with chandra yeah. yeah thank you uh, yeah prasad is again asking that i am a bit grantee and completed one year and milestone 2 expected to go to trl 4 by m3 in next 5 months Uh, so can he apply for sibri or bipp now so you can apply for sibri uh, but you should ensure that whatever work you are uh, proposing to be carried out in sibri the backup data or the preliminary data has been generated in the big yeah uh, i'm just checking if we have any questions on youtube Uh, so sure. YouTube live. There are any questions there? Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Shridhar, I think you had asked this question earlier. Clinical trial site visit, and that has been answered. That uh, site visit might happen to the implementation site wherever uh, you know you are carrying out your R&D, as well as the clinical trial site also. Okay. Okay. Thank you. in fact this is a very useful uh, presentation and thank you for uh, doing this but i have one question <coughs> on that <coughs> see we are doing a clinical trial so there is echo sir i am not able to get sorry i can we try you? now sir yeah can you can you hear me now yeah okay no <coughs> See, all the preclinical work is done. See, this company, okay. uh, we have a large organization. Okay. And uh, we most of the work is done with our sister concerns in terms of the preclinical work and all that. Okay. Uh, but we want to do the clinical trial uh, with our company. Okay. And uh, we don't have really an R and D space. R and D space is all shared by our sister company. Okay. Okay. So we are do we are planning to do a clinical trial in India, which is a huge unknown need in terms of brain tumors. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so when you come for a site visit or something, it will be and we are planning to do with the CRO clinical trial CRO, right? Okay. Then the okay. So your site visit or anything will happen with the uh, uh, at the clinical trial sites only. Okay. 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 And and one more question I have is, yes. and uh, to apply for this grant, do we have to have the IP in the name of this company? Because the IP is in the sister company, which is uh, located outside India. Yes, uh, but, then... uh, but 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 the uh, uh, the company which is there in the US is a subsidiary of the Indian company. 
Okay, so so you know this scenario also becomes complex. So if you can send me the details, I can get it addressed by the um, IP cell. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is very useful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Arti, we have one question uh, from YouTube Live. Uh, yeah. So Ashish yeah. is asking uh, for the AIR grant. Should okay. the source of idea or innovation uh, does it has to be from an academic partner or it can be from an industry partner also? So it can be from anybody, but the lead has to be generated by the academia, which can further be taken up by the industry for validation. Okay. But suppose if the idea belongs to uh, the industry partner, in that case, the POC studies would have been done by the industry partner, right? So in that case, the industry should apply in SIBRI uh, uh, grant for care, taking it up. Because industry cannot be the primary applicant in case of yeah, yeah. scheme. And it also okay. depends, you know, uh, uh, how... Uh, what understanding is between the, the academia and the industry for IP generation? There's one question uh, by Mr. Juneshwar in the chat box. They're asking how does physiotherapy academician uh, get the maybe BIRAC funds? Physiotherapy academician. So, um, you know, in your case, you can apply in under PACE um wherein the the academic institution where you are working can be the applicant and uh, whatever uh, area you are working in or you want to work in you can submit your proposal but if you want to apply as individual you you might like to think about the big grant wherein individuals are also eligible to apply um, sure i think um, that's all we have uh... So, uh, Sorry, I, I have one more question. This is uh, How do you send email uh, to Arti, Dr. Arti? Uh, if you can see the screen, uh, her last slide where her contact details are there. You okay. can see an email address there. Maybe you can just put it down. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So that's my yeah. email address. You can write to me anytime you want to. I'll be happy to help you. Yeah. And is it possible that, you know, uh, can I come and uh, meet you uh, uh, in Delhi? Because I'll be visiting Delhi in the first week of April. Sure, and sir. Uh, sure. Uh, you can okay. visit any time to us uh, mm -hmm. at Barak. Okay. So I, I will send you an email separately and uh, we, we can pick some time and talk to you on that. Right? Sure, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe we'll take up the last question here from uh, Sona Sharma. She is asking. Uh, one of our undergraduate physiotherapy students has an innovation idea. Can they be mentored if they do not have any publication? Uh, so, uh, yes, like uh, we are there to help them. And uh, we do mentoring through our Ignition program. So you can always connect with us. Yeah. Our Venture Center has been doing a commendable job. And Barak is also, uh, you know, proud to be associated with Venture Center. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Arti. Thank you uh, for a very informative talk on all the funding opportunities which are available at BIRAC. And uh, I'm sure the participants have really benefited from your talk. Uh, can we now move on to the panel discussion? Thank you, Dr. Kale. And I would um, uh, uh, exit the uh, conference. So uh, thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, many applications from the grantees uh, who were in attendance at this conference. Thank you. Yes, yes, there would be. People are approaching us, uh, commenting and applying for CIPRI and even uh, PACE. So there okay. would be. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Okay, thank you for joining. Uh, requesting our participants to stay for the panel discussion. So we have uh, two of CIPRI grantees and one PACE grantee with us to share their experiences. How did they prepare and apply and then get the grant? Uh, so I will now hand over to Meghna for introducing our panel. So uh, for today's panel, we have uh, three people. Uh, first up is Dr. Mahesh Kulkarni. He is a PACE grantee. Uh, he has contributed significantly to understanding protein glycation in diabetes by using mass spectrometric and proteomics approaches. 
Recently, he has started working on developing value-added biosimilars and characterization of biotherapeutics. He has published more than 80 research papers. He has also been elected fellow of Maharashtra Academy of Sciences in 2016. He was Raman Research Fellowship to visit University of Finland in 2016. And uh, he's currently working as principal scientist in NCA. Uh, the other two panelists, uh, the next one is Shantini. Uh, she, after spending more than five years in the biopharma sector, she has taken a leap to co-found Pragmatic Healthcare Solutions with a vision to develop affordable healthcare solutions addressing the local challenges faced in India and other LMI countries. Uh, at Pragmatic, their mission is to increase the access and adoption of periodic cervical cancer screening in India to ergonomic and cost-efficient solutions. And her key expertise lies in the development of bioanalytical assays. And the last panelist for today is Dr. Chinmay Khare. Uh, he's received his BSc in Physics from University of Pune and master's degree in nanomolecular science from Jacobs University, Germany. During his PhD, he's worked on fabrication of nanostructured thin films. Um, he has also worked later as a project leader on high throughput material screenings and development of surface coatings at Institute of Materials uh, in Germany. And he's the co-founder of uh, Wiesencraft Labs. So a very warm welcome to all the three panelists. And uh, over to Dr. Smita for the, uh, moderating the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Meghna, for introducing the panel. And welcome, uh, Sayantani, Chinmay, and Dr. Kulkarni. Uh, so maybe we, what we'll do is we'll first start with uh, the first question I know everyone would be eager to know uh, from you all is uh, at what point of technology development were you uh, when you thought of applying for SIBRI or PACE? So what was the earlier POC which was developed and then you thought of applying for SIBRI and uh, what was the proposed plan? So uh, maybe we'll start with uh, Dr. Kulkarni here. Uh, yeah. yeah, good afternoon uh, all. I uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Smita and Megha and the Ventures Center team. Uh, yeah, uh, I have been working uh, in the area of protein glycation from almost last 10 years. And uh, yeah, so one of the challenges uh, uh, in diabetes, we work in the area of diabetes. So one of the challenges uh, in diabetes is uh, uh, we uh, there are alternative mark novel markers are required. Currently, uh, diabetes is diagnosed by HbA1c, which is although it's a gold standard marker, but uh, it's not very efficient in certain conditions like anemia, pregnancy, and it doesn't detect uh, diabetic complications. So, in this context, uh, we have come up with alternative marker glycated albumin as an alternative marker. And we have identified certain peptides of glycated albumin using mass spec approach. These are, uh, we term them as glycation sensitive peptides. So these are much more efficient in determining pre-diabetes. And we believe that these could be useful markers uh, for uh, detecting diabetic complications. However, the challenge uh, in front of us was, uh, so this, uh, the method that we used was a mass spec method and this is not easily available in uh, many pathology labs. Okay. So uh, we are somewhere at the TRL level two or TRL level three, but if we want to take this forward to the next level, uh, we have to come up with some alternative strategies like immunoassay and other things. So in that context, we, I found uh, especially this BIRAC phase uh, is a very unique opportunity especially for academicians working in national institutes and uh, universities uh, where uh, we have kind of a low hanging fruit, but we, uh, we do not know it cannot be directly taken to the next level to the pathology lab. So this is an opportunity where uh, we can try our uh, proof of concept, what we have developed uh, uh, by using uh, funds uh, that we got. So in this space, uh, the idea of what we have proposed is to develop immunoassay for the glycated peptides of albumin and validate their usefulness in diagnosing diabetes and its complications. Okay. 
So uh, the one of the major challenge uh, I feel is um, we need to have a clearly defined objective. Okay, so uh, so. Uh, uh, so uh, there are actually a lot of back and forth communication between Pyrac and, and uh, our team, uh, especially they are very, uh, they want very clear cut objectives defined. Otherwise, yeah, the, uh, otherwise, uh, I, 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 and also uh, the Pyrac, uh, the mentors, the Pyrac, uh, they help us to define actually the number of samples to be considered. Uh, so these are some of the uh, suggestions we obtained from the Pyrac. Okay. So eventually, in, uh, in the in this month only, the final approval has come from Pyrac uh, uh, for the release of the grants. Okay. So this is what these are all. What uh, these are my thoughts. Okay. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to ask. Yeah. So these objectives which you were talking about, Dr. Kulkarni, I understand there was a to and fro communication with BIRAC team and right. they also helped you to refine the objectives, uh, you know, to make it more specific, right? After correct. you were uh, shortlisted. Right. After the, after the presentation. Correct, correct. correct. Sure. Uh, now maybe we'll move on to uh, Chayantini and Chayantini can share her experience that uh, at what point of technology development did you decide to apply for SIPRI? And then what were the guys? Uh, sure. Thank you so much, uh, mm -hmm. Smita and Meghna. Uh, so um, I would give a uh, short introduction about what we exactly do. Uh, so cervical cancer is uh, a leading cause of mortalities amongst Indian women, not just Indian women, but even uh, worldwide. But in India, one woman loses her life to cervical cancer every eight minutes. That's the gravity of it. In spite of it being the most easily, as in, it wouldn't be wrong if I say it is 200% preventable because it is caused by a particular virus and it is not just something that is cropping up in, on, in the body on its own. So um, what WHO says is at least 70% of a country's eligible healthy women population should be screened for human papilloma virus. But unfortunately in India, the uh, coverage is only of 2%. Now the reasons are... Uh, the women are not adopting PAP. PAP is the uh, regular term that is used for periodic screening. And the reason why they are not adopting PAP is because there is a lot of, uh, it's, it's a sexually transmitted infection. So there is a lot of taboo stigma associated with, particular, uh, with this particular disease. And also um, they do not want to go to a gynec and face the gynecologist chair, especially because they are healthy. There is no problem. And in India, in India, there is a, uh, mentality of we don't fix it until it is broken. So uh, that's one of the major challenges why Indian women are not adopting PAP in spite of having the best of testing methods in India. So we thought of, uh, you know, uh, shifting the entire experience of going to a gynac, experiencing a gynac's chair and getting herself, getting a lady uh, sampled to the privacy and convenience of her home, her bedroom. So we uh, devised, designed uh, a self-sampling kit, which consisted of a self-sampling device. Now this device, uh, when we designed, uh, it was, we already got a utility patent and a design patent. We had also uh, completed our uh, prototyping. We had a, a prototype ready with us. Uh, we also performed the preclinical tests, that is all the safety assessments, uh, toxicity, irritation to mucosal membrane, all these kind of tests we had already uh, performed. And uh, because we have a gynecologist on board with us, he could also try it out on uh, a limited number of ladies to check if it is uh, efficacious in collecting the samples adequately or not, just as a gynec would uh, collect. So with all these data that we already had, we had also approached CDSCO to uh, carry out a clinical trial and we got an approval for the study. Uh, now, we applied SIBRI exactly uh, for this particular work that is to carry out the clinical trial. Uh, we had all the approvals, we had done all the prerequisites to get the approval, but to conduct the preclinical, uh, sorry, the clinical trial on women, 
we required funds and that is exactly for which we, for which we had applied to sibri so we were somewhere in the trl level uh, 4 or 5 and we were aiming to go uh, reach uh, trl 7 so that was our goal uh, or rather the end deliverable uh, for sibri we are, the sibri uh, grant is uh, still on it has not uh, exhausted and the tenure is still going on so yeah as dr mahesh said uh, it was very important for us to explain what exactly we intend to do with the grant amount and why. So it was very important for us to bring out the impact and then substantiate it with um, our, our results as well as the publications that are already there on the public domain. Uh, and after that, it was also very important for us to convince them that uh, we have all the necessary requirements to carry out this clinical trial. We are not just asking for an amount in uh, thin air. So getting an approval takes a lot of time. So we already had this approval. We already had the ethics clearances, uh, uh, meetings going on. But to pay the fees and then finally to carry out the clinical trial, uh, we needed funds. And that is exactly what we applied uh, SIPRI for. And... Uh, uh, yeah, there was a technical round also eventually, which was uh, when we uh, showed them all that we did, right from how the idea came, how the idea was transformed uh, into a drawing on a paper, and then onto a, into a prototype, and then from the prototype, how exactly through pictorial, uh, real pictorial uh, depictions, or through lab reports, whatever, chote se chota, bade se bada, everything we uh, presented to uh, Sibri during the technical round uh, to convince them that yes, uh, we are not just talking, we have gone through all these steps. We had uh, meetings, we had focus group meetings with women. We asked them, uh, what is your opinion of having a uh, self-sampling uh, kit, a self-sampling option? Uh, of course, they were overjoyed to have that option, but we also went further on to ask them, what is it specifically that you want in that self-sampling device? We do not want to make something as per our understanding. We wanted to make something which is the women uh, are asking for. And that is why we formed these focus groups, did a lot of discussions, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, mental um troubleshooting on that level to understand how the design should actually be so that the experience of the lady is as comfortable and as smooth as possible. So all these data were collated and presented to Sibri uh, during the technical uh, presentation, which went on for really long. So uh, yeah, I think uh, our experience with uh, cracking the Sibri was uh, very uh, nice uh, we didn't have any uh you know uh roadblocks it went quite smooth and, and yeah i think that's about it so yeah what you want to say is the technical due diligence it yes. was a very thorough yes. one where they'll ask you everything from a to z how it has been done right yes yes yeah yes. okay uh, now moving on to Chinmay. Chinmay, your experience at what TRL level were you? What kind of uh, POC you had when you thought of applying for CP? Uh, Chinmay, you are on. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry for the internet trouble. Uh, yeah, thank you, Meghna. Thank you, Smita. Uh, so uh, what we would like to uh, possibly give insight into is a couple of aspects. One of aspect would be technical aspect. And the other one, uh, which kind of was very important for us was the timeline aspect. Uh, so we are a medical company specifically working on um, orthopedic implant applications for surface coatings. Uh, we have developed a coating for uh, uh, particularly joint replacement implants. And uh, we are a grantee of BIG. So we applied for SIBRI 
during our BIG term itself, uh, halfway through BIG. Uh, and as Anthony mentioned that uh, we kind of gathered all the technical data from inception level, uh, from idea level uh, to more like proof of concept level, which was still ongoing during uh, BIG project. And since we applied somewhere half of BIG, that is about nine months, 10 months period, we showed the roadmap of how things are going to be uh, performed or getting going to get executed uh, in the next, say, 10 months or eight months. Uh, so that until we actually arrive at a point where we can actually start our SIBRI project, uh, what we would have achieved. Uh, so we kind of demonstrated everything uh, in a very clear manner from timeline perspective. Uh, on top of that, one of the important aspect was uh, not just uh, the, the, the part with respect to conceptual level, but the data that we had. So the data comprised of a lot of uh, preclinical work, in vitro work, as well as animal work. So we presented it in a very systematic manner and presented it in a fashion that a reviewer or an academic reviewer would understand the rationale behind performing a certain assay because not necessarily everyone understands why a particular assay was performed. So uh, we designed our slides or designed our proposal in such a way that uh, anyone should be able to understand why this specific test or this specific assessment was being performed. Uh, adjacently, from the proposal point of view, uh, when we actually presented the proposal, during the technical round, we also provided more details on uh, the standardizations that we performed uh, with the statistical techniques and so on. Uh, apart from that, the timeline point of view, although we applied somewhere in the middle of uh, our BIG, the first proposal that we submitted, we received a response uh, from BIRAC with some improvements in our proposal, which allowed us some time to improve on those points, add specific data uh, to our proposal, and we resubmitted it in the next round. Since there are three calls every year, uh, it essentially allowed us to resubmit our proposal with those specific details that a reviewer had mentioned. So we submitted those details, and then, then in the second round of the proposal, we actually uh, went into the technical round. And during the technical round, we justified that whatever things were uh, actually asked for, how we have delivered those things uh, in, a, in a systematic manner. Uh, then from timeline perspective, I would like to also add that uh, the, the proposal uh, that we submitted, it was crucial that we submit it during BIG uh, because it, all the reviews and everything, it takes quite some time. So uh, it, is, it is important that whatever you have, you present it in a manner that the reviewer will understand, but at the same time, uh, keep some buffer time. So uh, during BIG, it's always recommended to apply uh, because then entire review process takes several months until the project is actually approved. So we just uh, got our, our first tranche of funding in the last month, and we are basically in the first milestone phase. Yeah. Thank you, Tinmay. Uh, good points that uh, it's very important to simplify the technical details so that uh, reviewers can understand it well. And secondly, uh, what you said is you were not able to make it in the first attempt, but uh, you did actually look at the reverse comments from the first attempt, worked on it, modified the things, and then applied again. And then you were successful. So that's a key takeaway for everyone that you might not be able to make it in the first attempt, but then uh, you can always look at what were the comments, what is expected, and you improve on that and resubmit with all those improved uh, things in your application. So that really helps. So yeah, that was an important point. Uh, next question which I have is everyone would like to know, uh, maybe we'll start with Dr. Kulkarni again. Uh, Dr. Kulkarni, if you can just tell us, uh, you know, uh, how much was the funding you had asked for? And uh, I, I believe in the pace, there is no matching funding. But when I talk to uh, Sainthani and Chinmay, I ask them to comment that there is a matching funding which is required and people uh, do worry about it. 
that uh, what can act as a matching funding for sibri so uh, dr kulkarni uh, was there any matching funding required for pace in, in the case of pace there is no matching funding required uh, however initially i had asked little more than what is the cap of the pace i i think the uh, pace thing is only for 50 lakhs but initially i had asked it more because the requirement was more but however i had to uh, shorten uh, reduce it to 50 lakh at the end this year so but they don't give more than 50 lakhs in the case yeah, and it's all grant for pays it is all grant right, right. yeah and uh, did they also ask you like what is the plan beyond uh, air so after you finish with pays will you be commercializing this and how will you be doing that so uh, the idea is once we if we get the results uh, positive the maybe right so then again uh, we'll go for a barack seek uh, barack funding uh, in uh, maybe in category or simply category involving uh, industry partner that we can develop some kind of kits and further this uh, can be used in to take it to the lab levels so did you have any expression of interest from any industry partner while you are applying initially i included the, an industrial partner uh, however the barack suggested that at this juncture it not required so we have to uh, exclude the them by me okay sure thank you Uh, moving on to chandani uh, maybe you can comment about this matching funding question that people could be eager to know about it actually even i can't because uh, uh, we had asked for only uh, 36 lakh and because it was not i think there is a cap uh, uh, into picture when it's more than 50 lakhs yeah. yeah it is if it is more than 50 lakh only then you have to give a matching so we uh, something that uh, we were very careful about was uh, not because we didn't want to give a matching funding but uh, because uh, we had already chalked out what our plan uh, is going to be like and we had already got quotations because we have to submit quotations and show them uh, the justification for the budget that we are asking for so uh, in that we hadn't asked for anything extra it was exactly point to point whatever was required so you know uh, then in that case they also do not slash down on anything it's you calculate well what you want you project it to them and of course if it is uh, exactly what you want is what you have presented then i don't think there would there would be any um, you know chances for them to slash it down so we had asked for we actually needed 37 lakh just because we thought that we have to have a, a contribution from our side also we said 36 we want from from sibri and 1 lakh we will uh, give from our end but then uh, during the press i mean after the presentation i think we got a call and we were we were asked to merge that 1 lakh also in the 36 and asked for a total of 37 lakh yeah sure yeah so uh, from budgetary point of view yes uh, absolutely uh, bang on that uh, the budget needs to be uh, very precise uh you have to submit all quotations uh and make sure that all the quotations are justifiable uh in terms of the overall budget uh for us of course uh, we need we require to uh actually match it up with the funding so the budget that we had requested for uh we almost got what we had requested for uh and then we were able to match it up with uh, with a with a funding from external source uh but then overall uh, obviously uh, some of these things are important when you are actually calculating the budget um, making a diligent choices in terms of uh, which equipment which consumables uh, maybe outsourcing partners and so on and to to get them to make sure that your budget is is well defined uh because at the end of the day the entire portion is not just going to be funded from byrac but also going to get funded through your proportion 
when you are going to match it with your own uh, seed funding or equity funding or something similar. So uh, whatever the budget is there, uh, making sure that everything is to its point blank uh, status. Uh, and if you want to comment on the matching funding. Right? Uh, yeah, so from matching point, funding point of view, uh, we actually had approached Venture Center for providing us some seed funding. Uh, so since we actually had a uh, SIBRI proposal during our uh, seed funding proposal, uh, we were hoping that this can match up and whatever grant seed funding or uh, rather seed funding will have, uh, it could actually match our SIBRI proportion. So we, we kind of made it in that way. Thank you. That was useful. So I, I hope participants have understood that uh, if they have money from a different uh, funds like seed fund or any other grant, that can also be shown as a matching fund. Or uh, you can even add your own money. Uh, so now moving on to Dr. Kulkarni again. Uh, would you like to share with us like during that technical uh, presentation round when you were initially shortlisted, what were the major questions? Were they around technology or team? Or the plan ahead, like if you want, uh, can comment like that will be useful for participants. So, uh, uh, in our case, the major question was about uh, the sample size. Okay, so initially, I think we had proposed about only two hundred or three and uh, around three hundred samples. Uh, we were restricted. Uh, we had restricted ourselves to uh, healthy diabetes and poorly controlled diabetes but uh, the barack team and the, uh, the barack team and the mentors they, they suggested that okay uh, we should uh, look for the diabetic complications which included diabetic nephropathy uh, retinopathy and uh, cardiovascular disease so now uh, right now uh, the sample size uh, so we are uh, following the sample size that is suggested by the BIRAC. So uh, that was the major, uh, uh, that was a major uh, 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 limitation or uh, uh, suggestion from the BIRAC. And were there questions around the, your team and you know, um, the plan ahead? What would be your strategy going ahead? Uh, in that regard, there was no question. So the main question was like, you know, the, what we have proposed is we have we have proposed to develop uh, produce a specific uh, map monoclonal antibody against glycated uh, peptide of albumin and develop immunose. So uh, the questions were around uh, this aspect only. Okay, sure. Uh, so, Dr. Kulkarni, there is a question in chat box by Dr. Sonal Mahajan. Uh, she is asking, can academia people collaborate with NCL or any other national institute scientists and how? So, maybe you can comment about NCL, uh, how people can collaborate. What, oh, collaborate with regard to? Uh, collaborate with NCL scientists. Yeah, yeah, they are uh, welcome to speak to any of the NCL scientists. And if there is a mutual interest, then uh, possibly it's possible. Uh, our NCL people might collaborate. It depends upon what is the what is the problem and how we can contribute to that problem. Yeah. So if there is good synergy in the research aid uh, work which you all are doing, then you all can definitely collaborate. Okay. Uh, now moving ahead. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kulkarni. Moving ahead to uh, Chantani. Yeah. If you can comment on you know what were the major questions during that technical. Uh, Presentation round, were they around technology, team, or the plan which you had proposed? What was that? Um, I remember there was one question. So we had, there was one question regarding the sample size because we had uh, proposed for only 150 um, uh, subjects for the clinical trial. Uh, in that, we could uh, easily justify them. They, they thought 150 is too less. But then we justified them why exactly we have 150 and why having a lesser sample size is also okay. 
So uh, it was basically we were uh, in, I mean, those 150 were people who were already having some kind of an abnormal, abnormal test reports, earlier test reports. So that is why, uh, obviously, I mean, out of those 150, at least we were expecting 50% to be HPV positive and which would give us a good basis to calculate our positive percentage agreement at the end of the day, as compared to a clinician collected sample. So once we gave them the justification and the rationale of why exactly we are taking 150, uh, they were fine with it. And uh, there was, <coughs> sorry, there was a, a, quite a lot of apprehension in terms of using the self-sampling device that uh, what if it causes some kind of an injury because it is used, it is inserted and it is being used uh, uh, in a, the, the format has now completely changed, but earlier you can imagine the format was something like a syringe. So there was, there was a piston which was supposed to be pushed and the brush would come out from the other end. So what if it goes inside and hurts um, the internal organs or the cervix? So that was a question uh, that uh, they asked, they repeatedly kept on asking us and uh, we uh, could justify the dimensions, the design of the device, and uh, yeah, so yeah, technically, yes, they were very uh, uh, critical and they scrutinized our, us very uh, closely on that part. Yeah. yeah, so during technical round, I think most of the questions were uh, related to our uh, product and essentially based on the methods that we are going to use, uh, to either assess our uh, product or specifically speaking certain standards that we are going to assess them with. So uh, in our case, uh, there is some there is something called ASTM standard. So uh, most of our studies are either based on ASTM standards or ISO standards. And there are certain benchmark values uh, that we have to achieve uh, in order to actually validate this product. And Specifically speaking, this product needs to be assessed through a third party lab. So uh, all questions were mainly revolving around uh, the assessment method as well as the testing method. And then certain questions were related to the processing conditions that we are using. Uh, maybe certain uh, nuances that uh, probably the only the experts uh, in the panel try uh, have understanding of. So in our case, there were, I think, four uh, panel members, uh, which were specifically from the domain. Uh, so they knew everything about this specific technology or possibly the area of expertise and domain. Uh, so they were very, very specific on the, on the, on the matter. Uh, and it was very focused discussion. And then maybe about 10, 20% discussion was uh, related to commercialization and, uh, uh, and the business angle of it. But mainly 80, 90% of questions were technical questions. So, sorry, mostly, I'm sorry to interrupt Smita. Uh, there is one more point that I would like to add as uh, Chinmay mentioned. Uh, yes, it, it uh, hugely matters who is there on the panel because ours is a very, uh, is, is a niche femtech pro product and uh, we had just one lady on, on the panel. So all the men were skeptical about it. Uh, they didn't understand the, uh, you know, uh, the consequences of uh, having it in the market. But the lady, I, I can't remember uh, who it was. It was some gynecologist, some doctor. And she was very vocal about it. And she really applauded the idea and uh, the initial data that we had already generated. So who is on the panel makes a lot of difference. Yeah, that is something that I wanted to add. So we can say that uh, say 60 to 70 percent questions were actually technical by the technical experts in the panel. And then the rest were about what could be the work plan and if you need to make some modifications to the sample size and the business model also. So uh, before we close, uh, a final key takeaway, some one important uh, message or advice for the applicants. So again, we'll start with Dr. Kulkarni here. Oh, sorry. 
So the final to ask that was I think it's very important to identify the problem. What's the problem that you are addressing? So uh, if the problem is interesting and it can be solvable, I know and I think getting friends is easier. Either Parag or you can go to any other money. But the most important critical aspect is you need to have a, a an important problem you should be addressing, and that should be a solve. This is what I feel. Thank you, uh, Shantani. Yeah, to add to that, of course, I'm sure uh, you all are aiming for Sibri, so you have identified a very uh, interesting or uh, you know impactful problem to solve, and you all have the solutions as well. But just finding the problem is not enough getting it across the table to the other person making that person understand what the problem is is the most important thing if the problem is explained well half the battle is won there i keep saying that if they can understand be slow be very methodical in explaining the problem and then come to the solution don't try to bring in your solution uh, very fast because uh, yeah uh, understanding the problem is very important. Ageka, they will understand everything on their own, uh, most of most of it at least. And uh, be very specific when you're designing the objectives and very realistic when you're assigning the timelines to the objectives. Uh, it shouldn't be something that is uh, uh, over, you know, uh, I mean, overwhelming to the uh, panelists. Uh, yeah, I think, and be very uh, diligent about submitting the um, budget quotations because uh, they are going to scrutinize it very closely. So don't just ask if you don't need it, but don't uh, shy away from asking it if you absolutely need it. Yeah. Sure. In my one yeah. important so, uh, uh, Yeah, I think maybe I can add two. Uh, one important aspect for us or defining part was the quality of data that we uh, actually obtained during our BIG. Uh, we made it sure that we are extremely focused during the BIG to get high quality data uh, so that whenever we actually get to the technical round, uh, the data should speak for itself. Uh, and then uh, the second part was, as Anthony mentioned, I think timeline uh, of your proposal in terms of uh, how the milestones milestones are structured and what are the deliverables in each milestone uh, because at the end of the day you are the one who is going to deliver them so don't uh, overdo it uh, as well as uh, don't underdo it in a way uh, you have to have it optimally planned uh, so that everything falls in the timeline because at the end of the day the the deliverables are the most important part when it comes to the proposal. True. So just to sum it up, uh, be very realistic, factual, and uh, diligent and patient also. <laughs> the process takes a long time. So uh, you have to keep up with that and uh, keep up following up and uh, then answer to their queries. Yes. So we are towards the end of our session today. I would like to thank all our panelists for today. Uh, Dr. Mahesh Kulkarni from NCA, Dr. Sayantani from Pragmatech, and Dr. Tinmay Khare from Vision Craft Labs for joining us today and sharing your experiences with the potential applicants of Sibri and Pace. I'm sure they might have more questions. They can always write to us. But uh, before uh, I have requested everyone to switch on their uh, videos for a group photo, uh, so while people are switching on their videos, there was one question here uh, by uh, Ranjit Singh. So uh, he wanted to know whether uh, the BIT grantee uh, name, uh, whether it has to be same on the Barak website. Yes, you will be using the same login for Sibri application. Uh, so aim, objective, etc. will be same. So see, your uh, rational and novelty remains the same, but your objectives will change because uh, you will now from BIG move on to uh, a further uh, TRL level. So accordingly, your objectives will be defined. So like uh, Anthony said, uh, they had completed POC and then they had pitched for completing the clinical trials. So accordingly, and Manpower presently working in BIG project will, uh, yes, you can uh, treat them 
as the same manpower for completing your sibri if uh, that's the expertise which is required to complete the set of experiments planned during the sibri so i hope uh, that has answered your question and there is a feedback form link which megna has shared in the chat box kindly fill up that and uh, megna tell us when we are good to go for a good photo So yes, Megna is clicking the group photo so we all can smile. Megna, let us know when you are done. Yes, she's taken the photo. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today in case you have further questions you all have our email address so i'll still post my email address in the chat box and you can always connect and ask us questions we'll be happy to even mentor you uh, for pays as well as cbd and dipp and uh, thank you to the participants who joined us on youtube live uh, we'll also post our email address there and if you have any queries you can always get back to us if we have the answers we'll uh, respond or if we don't know the answers we'll definitely uh, forward it to the barac associate associate and uh, get you the answer yeah thank you very much thank you bye bye thank you i'll keep the meeting on for people uh, who are still filling the feedback form if you are done with the feedback form you can send